Okay, uh, thank you everyone and thank you Billy for the warm uh, welcome. So my name is Karen, I'm from the community engagement team and together my wonderful team here, uh, we organized the StackX meetup. So I'll just have a few slides to go through some of the logistics, uh, share with you uh, about GovTech and then we can start the session proper. Okay, so uh, first thing we wanted to highlight to you is that we will be recording the session. Uh, so both here in person as well as the online session, we will share the recording uh, over in the developer portal after this. Uh, we also ask that uh, there'll be a question and answer after this. So the speakers will present and then uh, we'll open the floor to questions and answers and we invite you to ask as many as possible. Uh, okay, uh, before Kim Lee brings up the next slide, in terms of logistics, uh, since you're here for colleagues in person, the restroom, the gents is here, and the ladies is further behind. Okay, uh, so this is the program we have today. Uh, Stephen will give uh, an introduction, and then followed by Shana and Keith, um, who will present, and then we'll have the question and answer. Okay, so if you are here, uh, I assume you've joined our StackX community. This is the meetup that uh, GovTech organizes uh, to engage uh, community, folk, community friends like yourselves. Uh, so you can scan the QR code to join us. Uh, events that are upcoming will be presented here and we will uh, share it with you. Okay, so uh, just two more slides. Uh, just a background of GovTech. We are over 3,000 strong. The work that we do is uh, broadly categorized into three different areas. So the first one is products. Uh, we run some of the strategic national projects. So some that you might be familiar with on uh, digital identity, uh, our Singapore government technology stack, um, et cetera. And then we do have uh, some of the uh, capability centers. We have five of them, uh, which is listed here, the application development, data science, uh, and AI government infrastructure, cybersecurity, sensors, and IoT. So these are capability centers uh, hosted within GovTech. Uh, at the bottom, we also uh, host some of the whole of government infrastructure. So this is, uh, um, it, it goes from some of the devices that our government officers use uh, to data centers that we run as well. So the second pillar in the middle uh, is groups from services. This uh, forms about half of GovTech uh, staff. So these are colleagues that are forward deployed to agencies uh, that run the uh, IT systems uh, and projects for them as well. And the last uh, pillar is the cyber and governance, which is uh, important. The government chief information security officer uh, resides in GovTech. Uh, and we also run and lead some of the policies and governance uh, for whole of government projects. Yeah, okay, so then the last one uh, we wanted to share also is the Singapore Government Developer Portal. Uh, this is a place where we host uh, all the projects and products that government develops. Uh, it's hosted on this website. You can check it out as developer.gov.sg. So besides product information, fact sheets, um, roadmaps, and uh, contact persons for the different projects, uh, we also host some of the technical documentation. So you feel, uh, please feel free to join and uh, discover the, the, the portal. And last one also is the videos uh, for sessions such as this will be posted on the Singapore Government Developer Portal. So uh, without further ado, um, I won't hold up the mic. I'll pass it over to Stephen, uh, who will give an overview. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm very glad to, to be here and see all of you in person. It has been a while since uh, we had our first StackX uh, session in person. Right? Um, yeah, so my name is Steven. I belong to, I come from the uh, application development capstan in GDS. Uh, today, uh, we'll have a couple of speakers from our team. We'll talk about um, some of the products that uh, Karen briefly touched on in the grant space, for example, like uh, OSG, our OSG grants portal. It's a grants portal that we work together with MCCY, or MSF, Ministry of Fam uh, Social Family and Community, Youth and, and Culture as well as port board, um, um, targeted audience are BWO, NGOs, and sports, and, and the other, other, and so on and so forth, as well as a tote board. Yeah. And then followed by business grants portal, develop this together with MTI and other um, economic sector agencies like ESG and all that. Uh, it helped us a lot, uh, businesses a lot, with regards to um, dispersing grants, especially during the COVID uh, period. Uh, and our team will elaborate a lot on, uh, on that as well. And lastly, then, um, 
we'll talk about a fraud detection platform uh, because uh, you know when the government gives out grants and, and helps citizens and businesses they'll always be back by trying to uh, make use of the system and crack loopholes and all that uh, so this is where it comes in uh, to catch and prevent the bad guys from, from, from doing that. Um, the session, uh, while I keep it as interactive as possible, there's also a place for you to post the question. So please feel free to keep the questions coming and we'll address it uh, subsequently. And the team will touch about the development journey, how we go about it, why we do that, and the outcome, the benefits it brings to the citizens and businesses. Yep. Without further ado, um, I'll pass on the stage to the like my colleague over. So thank you, Stephen. Um, and now to the part that everybody is waiting for. Just before uh, we begin our session today, I just want to share that we do have our talent attraction team uh, present here today. So if you have any questions, just feel free to raise up your hand as well or you know, walk to the side. We'll be happy to actually take on that. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, we are hiring very aggressively. So if you are interested, please come and approach us. <laughs> Yes, okay, so um, thank you, Stephen. Um, let's welcome our very first speaker from GovTech GDS to start tonight sharing on the Singapore government grant journey. So, Shaina, please. Hey, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming down today. We are very happy to see people here in this space again. And we're very glad to be able to share our Tech for Public Good initiatives with everyone here on site as well as online. Okay, so my name is Shana and I'm a UX designer here at GovTech. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm here today with my teammate Keith, who will be our second presenter of today. And today we're just going to be talking about our process in enhancing the user journey for Singapore government grant portals. Okay, so let me first start by introducing you to our portals. Uh, first up, we have the Business Grants Portal. Uh, Stephen touched on it a bit earlier. So I think as its name suggests, it's a one-stop portal for business grants. And we developed it in partnership with the Ministry of Trade and Industries Grant Management Office. Okay, its sister portal is RSG Grants Portal. And RSG Grants Portal is a one-stop platform for community and social grants. And we developed it in partnership with the Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth. Okay, now while we develop these two portals um, separately to cater to the different business needs of their respective grant sectors, they're actually very similar in terms of the problems that they solve, the functionalities that they have, as well as their tech stack, which we'll show you guys later. So both our portals were also developed using the Agile methodology, and they both have an internet-facing system for grant applicants, as well as an intranet system for grant officers. And at their core, what our portals really aim to do is to be able to digitalize and streamline the grant landscape in order to create a better user experience for both grant applicants as well as administrators. And today, we're just going to be taking you through our process of why we got started in the first place. So what were some of the problems that existed before our portals? What we did to solve these problems? And then finally, how we enhanced our portals along the way. Now, as mentioned earlier, as we go along in this sharing, if you have any questions at all, feel free to write it down and we'll address it at the end during the Q&A segment. Okay, so what was the grant process like before? Okay, so I'm not sure how many of us here have tried applying for grants. And if you have, then you can probably relate to what I'm about to share. But if you haven't, no worries, we can try to imagine together. Okay. So I want us all to think of a cause that you're passionate about, whether that's supporting certain communities in need, um, starting a small business, or even bringing communities together. So whatever that may be for you, imagine that you have everything in place to kickstart an initiative for whatever your idea is. Okay, you have the people and you have the plans, and now all you need are the grants to get it going. So where would you start looking for grants? And that's a simple question, right? Because most people would just Google it. And that's what most of our applicants did as well. But the problem with that is because there wasn't a consolidated space, space, space where you could find this grant information, you would have to first search up all the agencies and ministries that may be offering suitable grants. So for example, NYC, NAC, or MCCY, 
and then you would have to go to each of their individual websites, search up the grant information, and compare all of this separately. And that is a lot of work to have to do. So maybe I'll put it in an example that more of us can relate to. Um, I like to say it's like booking a flight for a holiday. And now that borders have reopened, maybe this is something that some of us will be doing soon. Just need to uh, renew your passport early. Okay, so the best place to get an overview of all the flights to your destination would be to go to a site that consolidates this information for you. So for example, a site like Expedia or Skyscanner. Because without platforms like these, what you would have to do when you're looking for a flight is to go to all of the different airlines, search up your flight, compare the route, the timing, the price, all of this separately. And that is a lot of work to have to do. So similarly for our applicants, it took a tremendous amount of research just to find suitable grants. And now say that you've managed to find these grants and you can go in to apply for them, right? Um, but the next thing you realize is that some of the processes and steps that you have to take across different grants can be very different. So it makes it very complicated to navigate the grants landscape. And furthermore, the forms that you have to fill in are long and they're complicated. So all of this makes for a very inconsistent, a very complicated and confusing journey for anyone to have to navigate. And so we knew we wanted to do better and we wanted to improve the experience. So one of the first things that we did was to work across these different agencies and ministries to consolidate all their grants into one space. Now this already greatly reduces the time that it takes for applicants to search and apply for grants. We also standardize the processes so that it's less complicated um, to navigate and when you're applying for different grants, you don't have to learn all these different steps. Next thing we did was to simplify the forms and to give them all the same look and feel. So what this does is it allows us to create a more, I guess, consistent experience for applicants. And it also allows us to create a sense of familiarity whenever they come back and use our portals. And doing this is important for us because for a lot of tech for public good initiatives, people are using our products not because they enjoy it, right? But mostly out of necessity. Because if you think about it, no one is applying for grants because they enjoy the process of applying for grants, right? It's because they need the help and support and the funding that these grants provide. So we want to make it as painless as possible to get this support and this funding. Finally, the last thing that we do uh, allow our applicants to do is to be able to import their details using SingPass and CodePass. Now, this already um, will help them in reducing the time that it takes to fill in their application forms. We also validate the fields on our forms so that um, we can minimize the number of mistakes made um, before you send your forms up for submission. And doing this, right, not only helps our applicants, but the people assessing these uh, application forms as well. So our grant officers, because our grant officers, they face their own fair share of pain points too. One of them being having to spend a lot of time going back and forth with applicants um, on incorrectly filled forms. The next issue that they faced is the same issue of not having a centralized repository and having grant information scattered across multiple sources. Finally, their work processes were largely manual. So think things like um, sending documents over snail mail, um, scanning them, filing them, things like that. So it wasn't always the most efficient way to work. Uh, in addition to that, their work was largely done in silos. So what this means is that it makes it very hard for agencies to be able to check for instances of double dipping, which is essentially a form of fraud. So we knew we wanted to include some features that would benefit grant officers and the people doing the processing work as well. So one of the things that we looked into doing was how to reduce some of these manual processes by allowing them to send their grant awards to applicants through our system instead of sending it via snail mail or getting the applicants to come down uh, and sign it themselves. Now they can send it over our system. And we validate that acceptance from our applicants end using SingPass and CodePass to make sure that the whole exchange is secure. So we also integrate with systems like Workday uh, to reduce the manual processing of claims and to help applicants receive their grants a lot faster. 
Okay, next, uh, we also look into ways at, of how we can better support our grant officers um, by, I guess, looking at how we can help them empower their grant applicants better in their journey with our no wrong door policy. So how this works is basically as a grant officer, if you receive uh, an application that may not be the most suitable for your grant, instead of flat out rejecting your applicant, you can now route it to a different uh, agency or grant scheme for their consideration instead. So that's another benefit of being a whole of government platform because we break down these silos between agencies. Finally, we allow for the data sharing of application information within agencies themselves. So this helps for better grant governance, and it also allows officers to be able to check for instances of double dipping. And being able to check for these cases of fraud is important for any agency that deals with giving out money, right? Because, especially because in the recent few years, there has been a rising number of fraud cases involving government grant schemes, as well as the quantum involved as well. And we know that building up shared intelligence is absolutely key in tackling fraud. And that is exactly what drove another one of our teams here at GovTech to come up with a solution to this problem. So together with the MTI's Grant Governance Office, uh, they developed the Fraud Detection Platform. So the Fraud Detection Platform, or FDP for short, is an internal confidential platform that allows public agencies to conduct due diligence on their grant applicants businesses and partners in order to counter fraud against, gov against government assistance schemes. Okay, And the FTP has two key features. The first is its secured repository that allows public agencies to be able to store, share, and update their due diligence list, thereby building up shared intelligence. The next key feature that it has is its ability to conduct a network analysis based on conflict of interest graphs um, constructed from government verified data. And how FDP works with our portals is in two ways. The first is through a direct dashboard access. So access to this dashboard is only given to specific users, such as investigation officers, for them to conduct deep dives and due diligence checks on grant applicants. The next way it integrates with our portals is through uh, API integrations. So how this works is that when FDP detects a breach, it's then reflected onto our grant portals to whoever is assessing the grant at key decision-making points to help them make more informed assessments. Now doing this not only enhances our ability to better counter fraud, but it also saves our officers a lot of time in conducting these checks by themselves. And so it's really a, quite a big win for us to have FDP on board our portals. And looking back on our journey, um, our portals have also managed to garner their own fair share of other wins along the way, such as um, being able to save oops, over 6,000 hours for grant officers over the span of a year. We've also managed to reduce application time by 67% while maintaining an 80% satisfaction score. Okay, and along the way, we've also managed to reduce the time that it takes to launch grants on our portals. And agencies on board our portals have also shared that being on board has helped them to become more effective and efficient in their grant administration. And along the way, our portals have also grown to support many other agencies, many grant schemes, and our teams have also expanded to better support this initiative. So it's really been quite an exciting time for us here. And now I've shared about the why and what uh, of our portal, but the next question is how. Because while we were building our portals, we were posed with one big challenge. And that is with so many agencies to onboard with different processes and workflows and forms, how do we support them all on one system? And our answer to that is harmonization. So harmonization is our process of identifying synergies across grants, across workflows, consolidating them into a standardized solution that will work for, for everyone, essentially. And for us, harmonization had to first happen on a policy and governance level, which then enabled us to translate that into having harmonized grant schemes, processes, and forms. Now, as I mentioned earlier, doing this not only enables us to create a consistent and familiar experience for our users, 
but it also saves us time in building and developing these grants as well. And along our process of harmonizing and coming up with these common components, we were able to identify an opportunity to further reduce the time that it takes to build new grants. And I'll pass the time on to Keith to show you how it's done. Okay, uh, thank you, Shana. My name is Keith and I'm a quality engineer from GovTech. Um, from Shana's presentation, we can clearly see that there are some synergies between tech and grants governance. So now we will show you how we combine the two in order to be able to publish grants on our SG Grants portal with the SNAP using a harmonized solution, introducing the grant admin module. Simply put, the grant admin module, or I will call it GAM for short from now onwards, GAM is a low code website builder for grants. So think of a commercial website builder such as Wix, but custom made for grants workflows, such as for grant submission, approvals or rejections, claim submissions, change requests, or grant data exports. Now I'll show you GAM in action, starting with the grant scheme configuration form. From this grant scheme configuration, you can see how the user can simply put in a grant scheme code, input the grant's name, upload uh, agency logos, and select a launch date. Thereafter, select some configuration needed for your grants processing, such as whether or not it allows for budget configuration or for payment integration with workflow. On that same page, we can also provide further guidelines on how to apply your grants. This will be translated directly onto the internet facing page for applicants to better understand how to go about applying for the grant. Also consider what categories would your grants best serve? What would applicants need to submit if they were awarded the grant? You can select the appropriate options here in the grant filters um, section so that it can be translated directly onto our internet portal on the Explore Grants page to best match applicants and grant seekers to the grant that they need, thus solving a matching problem. Now, grant scheme configuration is complete. We will now take a look at the grants template, which is the, work, the grant builder on our app. Let's take a look. As you can see, it's very simple for us to select the sections needed and arrange it in the order that we want. Thereafter, all we need to do is select the questions needed for each section. Notice how certain questions are highlighted in red. These are required sections for each um, required questions for each section, such as requested grant amount is a required question for the budget template. At the end of it, we will present um, a temp um what you call this um, a template uh, before you publish the grant, and then it will appear directly onto the internet application. Over the course of building forms on GAM, we have amassed a huge library of grant questions, which are reusable across multiple grant schemes, thus reducing the need to duplicate question and code components. Should there, be, should there ever be a need uh, or when the question does not suit your grants, we can also customize a question for you. You can start by providing some helper text for the question that can help your applicants better answer the question. Um, it can come with placeholder and tooltips as well. Okay, so next we also have hard and soft stops on some of the questions that can prevent ineligible users from submitting the grants, such as this hard stop example over here. We can also configure certain soft stops that can prompt your users to consider if they are truly eligible for the grants or the soft stops can even redirect the users to an external form to get further information on their eligibility. Last but not least, we also have validations on the grant sections uh, when, we when we publish the grant, on the grant on the grant template. In this case, on the budget page, we are validating that the 
requested grants amount should be lesser than or equals to the projected budget, thus preventing users from submitting incorrect forms and preventing the back and forth processes between grant, grant officers and applicants. Overall, GAM has allowed us to digitalize grants quicker for the benefit of grant seekers, allowing for faster development time to market and lower development effort. We estimate that we are able to publish a grant on GAM with, within the time span of two weeks or one sprint with a single developer, as compared to eight to 10 weeks with minimally two developers. Next, it also allows us to have better grants governance processes because agencies are able to reference existing best practices across all the other grant schemes and be able to publish their grants quicker. This also helps them to save time for research and for seeking approvals for certain grant schemes, thus allowing them to save much needed time uh, so that they can spend the time to serve the applicants better. And lastly, GAM also allows us to reduce the reduce maintenance and push changes easily because it enables for quick on the fly changes to the grants, allowing for code changes, allowing for grant scheme changes without the need to go through the regular continuous integration and deployment pipelines. Now, our strategy for harmonization does come with its fair share of challenges, and one of which is to find common ground across our many stakeholders. We accomplish this through our Agile methodology, where we bring together all our stakeholders during our combined sprints review and com um, product backlog refinement sessions. There, we sit everyone down to come up with a solution that best meets everyone's needs. One example that has come out of this is a harmonized declaration form, which is reused across many grant schemes on our SG Grants portal. So over the course of our Scrum processes, it also helps us to better manage uncertainty and pivoting to meet the different needs of different agencies. And lastly, migration effort comes because prior to GAM, we had multiple grant schemes that were not built on GAM. Okay, um, so in order to fully reap the benefits of GAM, we needed to spend much needed development time and migration testing efforts in order to move the data correctly onto GAM. But overall, we feel like all this effort is worth it because of all the time saved for our grant applicants and time saved on development effort and time saved on grant officer's point of view. Now, I would like to quickly share the very first grant scheme published on GAM, which is the COVID-19 support grant. So using GAM, we were able to adopt our SG Grants portal to deploy the COVID-19 support grant within a short time frame of one month. Recall how on the 26th of March, 2020, the COVID-19 support grant was announced alongside the resilience budget. The team, a team was formed shortly thereafter, um, within one week to come up with a form that needed to go live by 4th of May in order to support members of the public who are very badly affected by the COVID situation. How we managed to accomplish this was through, the was through reusable technology, whereby we repurposed many of the components on our SG Grants portal, such as the MyInfo page, SyncPass integration, and error validation as shown earlier, all the form components in GAM as demonstrated earlier, as well as, as, well as, as well as reusing our code infrastructure for continuous integration and continuous deployment. So all this enabled us to quickly deploy the COVID-19 support grant portal within a short time frame of one month. So this benefited us because we, we are able to help citizens receive timely support. Overall, we have calculated, we received about 249,000 applications within 11 months. And this actually helps to alleviate a lot of manual effort that would have been done if not for the COVID-19 support grants portal. Now, what's next for the portals in Singapore government grants? 
we are looking at containerizing our application and then migrating them from the private servers onto the government commercial cloud. Commercial cloud. Thereafter, we are also looking to further expand our reach by, ex by onboarding more and more grant schemes across different agencies onto our portals. Thereafter, we, also look, we are also looking at automating grant processes using machine learning. And for the fraud detection platform, we are trying to improve our data quality and cross-checking across multiple data sources. Let's take, a let's take a little bit of time here to look at our tech stack. So for those of you who are techies, you can take a look at uh, what we use to build our apps. Notice how our SG Grants portal and the Business Grants portal share many of the same um, code, such as React and Ruby on Rails for the internet-facing application, and Apian, which is, um, which is a, a COTS product uh, for the intranet site. One key difference between us is uh, BGP, Business Grants Portal, is already migrated to the current commercial cloud, while OSG, our SG Grants Portal, is in the process of doing that migration. Okay, so with that, I will end our sharing. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at these handles. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you, Shaina, Keith, you know, for the insightful sharing. And I'm sure, you know, many of us here over at Zoom have questions, you know, for our speakers. So let's just dive in straight into the Q&A sessions. So let's just take on um, questions from the ground first. Yeah, you can just raise hand and we just bring over the mic to you. Hello, uh, can I ask like, how long did you take to build the GAM? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Hun Ling from uh, GDS GovTech. So I'm the delivery manager of our SG Grant portal. So GAM, Mm, oh, okay. We took about nine months to uh, come up with our POC with support from SNDGO. They fund us to do the POC. And after that, with support from MCCY, we, made, uh, we took about another nine months to roll out the actual product on the production. Yeah, so all together, it's like one and a half or within two years. And... Um, during that time, we focus on one grant archetype, which is the project grant type. We built that project grant type archetype uh, using GAM first. It, then eventually, we um, slowly built out other grant archetype like um, capability development grant archetype, which has different set of components on the GAM. Yeah, also slowly, we will build out more workflows on the GAM to facilitate um, uh, to facilitate uh, more features to be onboarded uh, on the OSG, like uh, application being the core one of the core features that we need to build on GAM as a workflow. Then we do have change requests coming up. We do have claims. Then uh, after that, we eventually roll out many more enhancements along the way. Yeah. So right now, if you ask me, we are still uh, enhancing our GAM uh, platform or modules along the way, yeah. I hope answer your question, thank you. Okay, thank you, Hun Ling. Shall we just take on another question from the ground? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm quite interested in the fault detection platform that you mentioned just now. Um, with regards to how it's being applied to the, the grants uh, platform, how did you measure the effectiveness of this FDP? Was it because you found more fraud? Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, I'm Roy from GDS, uh, working on the fault detection platform. Yeah, so I think you're right to mention that it's not about the number of uh, detection that we actually um, discover, because I think end of the day, we also don't want to see a very high number uh, of fraud. La. So I think that's not the intent, but it's really the uh, checks that we have performed along the way. Uh, I think 
in terms of our KPI, we are actually looking at um, the number of agencies that we can reach out to. Uh, that means uh, they have actually successfully onboarded to us, uh, looking at the number of users uh, that uh, actively do search as part and parcel of their work process. So I think that's important to us. Then of course, I think similar to um, what we have done with BGP and OSG is really uh, connecting through APIs. So I think right now we're also in talks with um, more agencies to see how we can um, integrate with more portals so that the outreach, uh, the good data that we have can reach out to more uh, WOG uh, officers. Lah. So I think that's how we are going to measure ourselves in terms of success. Uh, not so much about uh, well, how many uh, uh, dollars that we can uh, discover through thought. Lah. But I think that's also something that we want to uh, measure, but not as a KPI. Yeah, thank you. Just to add to that, the challenge about it is the cost avoidance. How do you measure the, cost, the avoidance that it didn't happen in the first place? So that's the reason why Roy emphasized it's not about catching, it's about avoiding it, which is also hard to measure if it's effective. Uh, another part of it is got to do with the blacklist and the, the watch list like that uh, agency will can pull together the intelligence so that if uh, you, you know some companies is doing something funny on this particular grant, right? Or this agency, you do not want this person to repeat the same thing on another grant and, and you know and, and, and cheat another agency. So that's where the data sharing can also help as well. Hope that helps. Huh? Okay, thank you, Stephen. Uh, we do have a question that comes in from Zoom as well. So how did you get business users uh, to the Ajar methodology given that government agencies tends to have more considerations? Well, it's um, I, I call it the <clears throat> pay it forward approach uh, or start small, then you iterate. Um, agencies, government agencies tend to be, can be quite uh, risk adverse, especially when it comes to new things. Uh. Uh, so, or number one is try not to scare them until the inertia sets in, uh, they don't do anything. Uh, so take um, manageable risk. Uh then they will try, then uh, use that as a success story to pay it forward. And then you can actually uh, have a, on it, up the sticks uh, a bit. And then you, you, you have credibility, uh, you have success uh, result, you pay it forward and then it gets bigger and bigger. So a lot of time, uh, at first it's like, um, you have a new kid on the block, right? And which agency will want to work with you? The more bold, more innovative ones, right? Uh, which is which is fine. You don't have to go big all the way, and then gradually, as you gain momentum, uh, I think after many years of our success and all that, and the COVID and all that, um, we start to see a change in the agency's uh mindset and being very receptive to the agile approach because they see that work, uh, and eventually the laggers will come on board because they don't want to to be left behind. Yeah. So important to know, uh, select the, uh, the right agency to partner with in, in the beginning of the journey of uh, this agile uh, digitalization journey. Yeah. And try not to and avoid uh, boiling the ocean. Yeah. It doesn't work. Uh. Yeah. Over. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tina from MCCY, business user. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the beauty of a gel methodology is that we cut a lot of paperwork. So imagine the waterfall method, right? Your tender spec list A to Z, and you just follow and deliver. If you want to make any changes, you have to put out a lot of paperwork to seek approval. Whereas for the a gel methodology, we don't have to do that. So that saves us a lot of uh, work to do. And the second thing is that um, a gel, we can deliver things at a very fast speed. Yeah. And the third uh, benefit I will say is that Agile focus a lot on the users. Okay, so in the past we we seldom con we, we don't even have UX to do uh, um, dialogue sessions with user. Whereas for Agile, we along the way when we built the OSG portal, right, we conducted so many um, UX interview, and it's planned between uh, the tech side and also the business user to design the the user interviews. And then that's why we get a product that we receive quite a lot of compliments from both citizens and also the government agency who is on board. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Tina. Do we have any more questions from the ground as well? Means a lot to me, from me. <laughs> yes. Yep. Sorry, thank you. I'd like to ask, why is the OSG and BPG on different portals? I, I can take that. Um, because of the targeted audience are very different. Um, BGP was first started about seven years ago. Um, targeted audience are businesses. So it's blue, very corporate-ish, more professional look. And uh, you look at the OSG, is a lot more colorful, like orange and yellow and all that. It's more vibrant. Uh, so that's the reason. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the main reason. It's hard to conflate the two and, and target audience are also very different. Hope that helps. But the tech stack, as you can you saw earlier on the table, they are at exactly the same. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, in fact, you know, we do have a feedback you know, from someone uh, in the Zoom. Uh, GAM is an impressive CMS. Great job. So is there any governance over the content to make sure that only essential info is asked? Uh, jargon is avoided. I really wonder about the use of these words, grant, grant scheme, and grant assistance scheme used interchangeably. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Um, GAM really um, help us a lot for the onboarding process. And, okay, so, so there's a few questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, getting over, cannot see the, the, the text is very... Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, the first question is, um, is there any governance over the content mm. to make sure that only essential mm. info is asked, yes. jargon is avoided? Yeah. So MCCI definitely is the gatekeeper for what goes on uh, onto the uh, forms itself. Yeah. And we do come from a policy point of view and also governance point of view. Okay. For so for MCCI, um, we are the sector lead for engagement and partnership. So there is some, uh, definitely some KPIs and outcomes that we want to measure. So in order to measure such outcomes, definitely we have to collect the data, that the right data uh, at the point of application and also uh, subsequently to measure the outcome at the point of uh, disbursement. Okay, so first of all, we identify the different uh, archetypes of grants in the community sector. Okay. So just now, Huning did mention uh, the first uh, grant archetype that went on board was the project grant type. Uh, so project grant types are actually uh, grants that support uh, ground up uh, initiative running project that is uh, doing good for the community. Okay. Then uh, the second archetype is the capability development uh, grant archetype, where um, we give grants to develop uh, um, talents of certain sectors, for example, sports, arts, okay, or to support the youth uh, in that sense. And the third archetype that uh, we developed using uh, GAM was the research grant, where we support research projects in, for example, heritage. And also, uh, to, again, the youth who is our future generation. So we have a lot of grants that is supporting the youth. Why we need to identify the different archetypes is because first thing, the data, the policy behind it, and also the different outcomes. Yeah, okay. And um, so some experience uh, when onboarding all these different grants, because all, some, the grant has been out there for a long, long time, and then agency tend to collect more and more data along the way, okay? Especially uh, when it's like, uh, nearing end of financial year, then you'll start thinking, oh, I need to get this to evaluate this and that. So over time, they start to build in more and more fields. And what happens? It really puts citizens off when they apply. So when they onboard OSG, that is the time to do review. And then we help them to streamline. And we question them, why do you collect this? Why do you collect that? And some of the times, they already it's just historical and then nobody knows why. And it's just the best time to just reduce and do it away with all of this. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you, Tina. Okay. Any questions, you know, any more questions from the ground? Welcome to raise your hand. We'll pass the mic over. Uh, yeah, hi. So actually, I actually wanted to know, like, what is the current onboarding processes like? Is it like a manual processes or is it like a digital process currently? Okay, so for onboarding uh, port, uh, porters, uh, first we need to understand from the agency uh, what kind of grant schemes that you are serving now to the public. And then uh, is the best way is email us, talk to us, and then uh, we will uh, share with you what we have at the moment, and 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 also we will assess what whether your grant scheme fit um, into any of our grant model available on the portals now, so that we don't have to you know uh, create a re redundant grant schemes just for for you to onboard. It will take a lot of time to to do that, but instead. Uh, we will encourage, encourage you to onboard uh, using GAM, which is much more faster. But beforehand, we do want to understand from the agency, you know, uh, what kind of uh, grants nature that you are looking at uh, so that we can help you uh, in many ways. So do, do talk to us because just, 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 just now we flag uh, the, this one slide that you can find our contact there. Yeah, do reach out to, that, to us. Uh, give me some time to sell a bit of Goyo also. <laughs> okay, um, so that's for onboarding to uh, the two uh, grant portals. Uh, for the fraud detection platform, uh, I think we are also always on the lookout to talk to more uh, gov government agencies to see how we can bring them on board. Uh, so similar to what uh, the grant portals are doing, we are also on a gel method. So I think we are continuously trying to improve, trying to add more uh, features as well. So that's where uh, when we talk to the different agencies to understand your needs, uh, we can see how we can morph uh, what we have right now to cater to your needs. Lah. So uh, similarly, if you are from a government agencies and you like to see how we can work together, uh, reach out to us. Thank you. Any more questions? We do have another question um, that came in from Zoom. So um, I'm from a company that successfully applied for the productivity solutions grant through BGP. After claiming the full amount given to us, we started to receive cold calls from vendors pushing their products simply because they have an associated grant um, application process through BGP. Will you be looking into moderating these vendors in some way to stop this customer phishing? Uh, there should be at least be some way to stop vendors from hounding SMEs that have used their grants. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm uh, Nicholas, uh, delivery manager for the BGP portal. Yep. So um, I think this is the first time we are hearing this and um, we appreciate the feedback and definitely we will raise this up with our uh, grants management office just to find out, um, find out further like, what, what's going on on the ground. Yep. I think alternatively, sometimes we can also give this feedback to our customer uh, support hotline yeah, for BGP. Yep, That's, okay. thanks for the feedback. Thank you. Okay, shall we just take in one more questions from the ground? Okay. Okay. Uh, if not, uh, so before we just wrap up tonight, some sessions, right? Um, we want to do something a little bit more jovial. We want to show appreciation, uh, you know, to our speaker and also a very special StackX volunteer tonight. Um, so if I may, yeah, just invite Shaina and uh, Keith. To the stage, you know. Thank you so much for your presentation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.
and Okay, and um, as mentioned, right, uh, we would like to also present um, a token to our StackX volunteer. Uh, some of you might already know him, uh, Michael. Uh, yes, and some of our Singapore most active tech communities, including the Singapore PHP user group, phpconference.asia, and iOS Dev Scout. So he's here tonight um, to volunteer his expertise in live streaming and documenting our meetups for our virtual audience. So please join us on stage. Um, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have come to the end of the um, StackX Meetup today. So big thank you to, again to all the speakers and all of you for being so interactive. So we really love to hear from you. Um, so please leave us your feedback and tell us how we can actually improve you know, the experience for on-site and virtual experience. And uh, for those who are here physically with us today, do head over to the reception um, table at the back of the space. Uh, once you are done with the post-event survey to redeem your sweat packs. So appreciate the help and feel free to invite your friends, your colleagues, you know, for our future meetups, we are going to hold the next session next Thursday, uh, where we will talk about Garth Wallet, Garth Tech Latest Digital 2. Um, our speakers will also take you through the development journey and challenges in designing these two brand new features. So stay tuned to our Telegram chat and meetup platform for upcoming announcements and events. So thank you once again um, and hope to see you soon. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you.